Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As we are about to begin today's ceremony, please find your seat. Ensure that all pagers, radios, and cell phones are turned down or, if possible, turned off until the completion of the ceremony. As the ceremony is being conducted indoors, headgear is not required while in the building. At this time, I'll take a minute to explain the sequence of events. We'll have the arrival of our official party, followed by the national anthem, with the posting of our colors by the Wright-Patterson Honor Guard. The invocation, and then the official change of command. Throughout the ceremony, at certain times, I will instruct you as to when to stand and when to be seated. And upon completion of the change of the command ceremony, the Air Force song will be played, followed by the departure of our official party and a greeting line here at the rear of the hangar. As a reminder, please remain seated until the official party has had a chance to depart. At that time, you may form a receiving line at the end. I'll call your attention to those of you in the audience that have a sheet representing the description of the 88th Air Base Wing logo and group coin. Highlights of that include the history of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, starting almost 100 years ago with the original Wright Flyer being test flown here at Huffman Prairie, and sequentially followed by a large number of aircraft which have flown here or had their test either here or as an adjunct out at Edwards Air Force Base. In front of you today are representative vehicles that are part of the daily mission of the 88th Logistics Group, including the one which I am standing on, the 60,000-pound aircraft loader, the newest addition to the inventory. The vehicles you see are just part of the many different opportunities men and women of the 88th Logistics Group have in their service day to day. The change of command ceremony is deeply rooted in military tradition and dates back to the reign of King Frederick of Prussia. During this time, organizational flags were developed with color arrangements and symbols unique to each unit. When a change of command was to take place, the outgoing commander would pass the flag to the individual assuming command. This gesture was accomplished in front of the unit so all could see and witness their new leader assuming command. This symbolic tradition has survived through military history and will be a part of our ceremony today. At this time, I'd like to welcome you to the change of command ceremony for the 88th Logistics Group, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I'm Captain Nathan Drummond of the 88th Weather Squadron, your narrator for today's ceremonies. Today, Colonel Stephen M. Tate will relinquish command to Colonel Dennis D'Angelo. The presiding officer for today's ceremony is Colonel Michael W. Hazen, the commander for the 88th Air Base Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. Before we begin, there are some special guests in the audience that I would like to recognize. To begin with, Mrs. Hazen, Colonel Hazen's wife. At this time, if you'd please stand. Ms. Mrs. Tate, Colonel Tate's wife. Mr. and Mrs. Pat D'Angelo, Colonel D'Angelo's parents. Miss Mary Wagner, friend of the family. And Miss Helen Russo, Colonel D'Angelo's aunt. Colonel D'Angelo also wished to express his appreciation to a group of people that are not assigned here to the base but have made a significant journey to come see his change of command. This includes Lieutenant Colonel and Mrs. Cheryl McLean, Lieutenant Colonel Rick Betsford, Major Bill Leeds, and Dr. Tony Renier. We would also like to welcome at this time Lieutenant General and Mrs. Robert F. Raggio, the commander of the Aeronautical Systems Center.
Major General Paul Bielowitz, the Director of Logistics for the Air Force Materiel Command. Major General Charles Metcalf, retired, Director of the United States Air Force Museum. Brigadier General Select, Henry Taylor of the Air Force Material Command, Deputy Director of Logistics. And the 88th Air Base Wing, Chaplain Roger Winberg. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party, the posting of our colors by the Wright Patterson Honor Guard, and the playing of our national anthem by the Air Force Band of Flight.
Thank you. Would you please remain standing for the invocation to be delivered by Chaplain Roger Winberg. Shall we bow together? Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, we bow before your sovereignty and authority and give thanks for the many blessings we receive from you. You, the author of our liberty, have continued to preserve our freedoms. And we who wear the uniform of our nation are privileged to serve as your agents to protect and defend that which you have given. We pray for those you place in positions of leadership responsibility. Sustain them, granting them the wisdom, character, strength, and courage necessary to exercise the authority that flows ultimately from you. Guide in this ceremony as we witness the transference of leadership. We ask continued success in future endeavors for Colonel Tate. And we ask of you the special abilities, sensitivities needed for this new responsibility for Colonel D'Angelo. May your grace rest upon him as he serves you in this new capacity. Keep us all mindful of the privilege and importance of our particular service each day and of your ever presence and enabling power. And may we turn to you in faith that we may be truly successful in discharging the duties assigned us. And may you receive the honor and the glory for it. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Winberg. Ladies and gentlemen, you may please be seated. This time I'd like to introduce the commander of the 88th Air Base Wing, Colonel Michael W. Hazen. General and Mrs. Raggio, General Bielowitz, General Metcalf, Brigadier General Select Taylor, Senior Wing Leaders, Group and Squadron Commanders, Chiefs, Family and Friends of Steve and Becky Tate, and Dennis and Sandy D'Angelo. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests all. I don't think I left anybody out. You are all distinguished guests at this uh, ceremony today. We did pass a little bit on the quiet hours. Some things just can't interrupt progress. And you're in the midst of a, a, an area in which the logistics group has led uh, in improvement efforts in which you're going to see a tower right next to us, and some of which I'd hope we weren't going to build today, but we probably will. Uh, a long time ago, I heard a, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, our commander-in-chief once gave a command called a modified parade rest. I'm not sure what that is, but if you all can figure that out, I hope that you'll uh, wiggle toes and fingers and, and stay as loose as you can as I go through these couple of words I need to say. And if it was a good enough command for him, don't fall on me, Hal. Just stay, re stay relaxed. Today is a great day for America's Air Force as we stand before you to pass the mantle of command from one great leader to another, yet another great leader. On 16 August in 1999, Colonel Tate accepted the pennant of command and was charged and entrusted with both a legal authority and a moral responsibility for what was then called the 88th Logistics and Operations Group. Today, we salute his superior service and his dedication to what we cherish most, and that's mission accomplishment. Look around you. You see the setup today and all this ceremony is of Colonel Steve Tate's choosing. We show the aircraft in the runway and, and in, the, in this very hangar is an integral part of the airfield and operations mission which he supports daily. Even this stage, the state-of-the-art K-loader of the United States Air Force represents the logistics support of the missions, all of the missions which are performed so superbly by the 88th Logistics Group. Under Steve's leadership, the logistics group has flourished. This is a warrior team, a warrior team of contractors, civilians, and military. And to, uh, to borrow a phrase, this world's best unifit, this, but you, I'm going to get there, hold on. This, uh, this outstanding unit, the world's best, is no one comes close. I think that's on their coin as well. 
from the flawless performance during multiple inspections to numerous squadron and individual command awards, the logistics group has conquered all. Colonel Tate leaves a legacy that can only be equaled. It will never, ever be beat. As the law group motto says, and now this is a real risk, Semper Fortiter Armentis, and I know our chaplain isn't here to question my Latin, meaning always brave, strong support to our warfighters. Steve, Becky, Mary Kay, and Nate, who's off in China thinking about us today, a very old maxim by Abraham Lincoln says it best. The better parts of one's life consists of their friendships. Kathy and I thank you very much and will forever cherish our friendship. Colonel Dennis D'Angelo and family, welcome and congratulations. Colonel D'Angelo comes to us with a tremendous background and a history of success. He has excelled with people and has the strength and character found in only the Air Force's finest leaders. We have been given yet another winner. Dennis, you will quickly find this group's strengths comes not from their past accomplishments or achievements, but from its people. You must foster the enormous depth and value of the human spirit in the members of the 88th Logistics Group. Serve these people well, and they won't let you down, and keep your focus on our mission. You now have the best job in the Air Force. Best wishes to you and Sandy, and best wishes to the men and women of the 88th Logistics Group. Thank you for your comments, Colonel Hazen. Ladies and gentlemen, the 88th Logistics Group Commander is Colonel Stephen M. Tate. If you weren't so tall, how do you do this? It's the last time I ask a giant to do my uh, narration for me. Thank you so much for coming today. As I look around the room, and I ask you to look around the room uh, also, you'll see people here from the 88th Law Group. You'll see people here from outside the group in the wing. You'll see people from the center. You'll see people, people from headquarters, from the hospital, from the reserve units, from the guard units, retirees, active duties, civil servants, civilians. That is what we're about here, and that's how we make things happen. An ancient philosopher, Carol King, wrote a song called Tapestry. And in the first line of that song, she said, my life has been a tapestry of rich and royal hue, an everlasting vision of the ever-changing views. Now, we'll probably never know what old Carol was on that day when she wrote that. But I think it is a beautiful image. And I think it's a beautiful image for us to think about for those of us in the business of national defense, as everyone in this room is today. Because we are like a tapestry. In this tapestry, the weaver has woven a tapestry of rich and royal hue. There are strands of black, brown, white, red, yellow. There are short fibers. There are strong fibers. There are flexible fibers. Some are thin, some are stout. And as the tapestry of defense is stressed, as it is from time to time, by the needs of our country, some of those fibers are strained, strained to the point of breaking. Some are resilient. Some aren't, some need to be repaired, and some have to be called, some have to be removed. But the tapestry that results in the end, the tapestry that we are part of, is beautiful and strong and is a prideful thing. It has been my great honor for that two years ago, God, with the able assistance of Air Force Military Personnel Center, wove the thread that is my career and my life amongst those of you in this hangar today. In amongst the active duty, civil servant, contractor, reserve, National Guard, retired, and very importantly, volunteers that make this base unique, 
and make it what it is, uh, the critical component of national defense that it is. It has also been my great honor to be part of a base that has just recently proven that it is flexible and strong enough to support the warriors' immediate needs and their long-term needs. But this tapestry of defense isn't finished. Hopefully, it will never be finished. The loom still holds the fiber, and the weaver today adds a new thread, a thread that will make us all stronger yet. Ladies and gentlemen of the 88th Law Group, of the wing, and of the birthplace, home, and future of aviation, I salute you. Thank you, Colonel Tate. On behalf of the men and women of the 88th Air Base Wing, Captain Cora McAlpine would like to present flowers to Mrs. Tate in honor of the many hours of dedication and support you've provided the wing. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed with the change of command. Please rise for the publications of orders by Colonel Michael Hazen. Attention to orders. Under the provisions of Air Force Instruction 51-604, Colonel Dennis D'Angelo assumes command of the 88th Logistics Group, effective 13 June 2001. With a symbolic exchange of the flag, command of the 88th Logistics Group passes from Colonel Tate to Colonel D'Angelo. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is now my distinct honor to introduce to you Colonel Dennis D'Angelo, the commander of the 88th Logistics Group. Thank you very much. A lot of, lot of giants here today. General Mrs. Raggio, General Bielowitz, General Metcalf, General Select Taylor, Colonel Hazen, distinguished guest, fellow commanders, ladies and gentlemen, men and women of the 88th Logistics Group. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to stand before you today as the new commander of the 88th Logistics Group. However, I did not make this journey by myself. And I would like to take a short moment to thank those people who helped me in this achievement today. First, I would like to thank the Lord for making sure everybody got here safely especially those who traveled long distances. General Raggio, I'd like to thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to be at this event. More so, it means very much to me that uh, you are here today to support me and also your leadership. Thank you, sir. Colonel Hazen, thank you for providing me the opportunity to lead the 88th Logistics Group. I will work hard to support the wing mission and maintain your trust in me during my tenure. Also, I would like to thank Kathy and you for taking Sandy and me into the Wing family. You've made us part of the team from the start, and we appreciate that very much. Colonel Tate, thank you for leaving a great organization and making a very smooth transition for me. Uh, I've got big shoes to fill, let me tell you that. To my fellow commanders, uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come here today as well. I look forward to working with you, and most of all, I look forward to uh, building a lasting friendship with you that will endure the command after the command is over. To my friends, Tom and Cheryl McLean, Bill Leeds, Rick Batsford out in the background here. Uh, also, we have uh, Tim and uh, Deb Brenneman, 
Pam Richards, Francis Underwood, and of course, Tony, Gabby, and Michelle Renier, who've traveled a long way to come for this event. I thank you very much for your support and most of all your friendship. To my immediate and extended family, to Mrs. Mary Wagner, who sits in the front here. She guided me into the Air Force over 30 years ago when I ran into Civil Air Patrol. She taught me more about leadership, teamwork, and uh, taking care of her people, and I will not soon forget those lessons that you taught me, Mrs. Wagner. To my brother-in-law, Ken Ryan, who's more than a relative, he's a friend. And uh, man, what a friend you were. You've helped me through this week, and I couldn't have made it without you, buddy. Thank you. To my Aunt Helen for always being there and being my lover, uh, helping me with, uh, with everything and loving me like you do. To my parents, Jean and Pat D'Angelo, for always being there and teaching me, I think, the best lesson of all, which means there's nothing that you cannot accomplish if you put your mind, body, and soul to it. And most importantly, to my soulmate, uh, Sandy, who's not here today, but uh, she provides me with a special type of love and support that only she can provide. This day is as much for all of you as it is for me. To the men and women of the 88th Logistics Group, thank you for your, this wonderful event and the support you have given Sandy and me during our transition to Wright-Patterson. I know these events just don't happen, and there's a lot of hard work and planning that went into this uh, event that we see here today. More so, you accomplished this all in the midst of an operational readiness inspection, one that you did very well on. Juggling these two events while providing outstanding support to our customers reflects greatly on your professionalism and commitment to duty. You are tops in your field, and I pledge to keep you the best in the Air Force. We will do this by keeping our focus on mission, people, and the community. Our mission, as always, is to provide warfighting support to the warfighter whenever and wherever needed. We will do this to continue to foster the outstanding teamwork between our military, civilian, and contractor teams. However, we can't accomplish this mission without people. People who have the skills, who are empowered, and who are motivated to get the job done. I pledge to provide you, military, civilian, and contractor alike, with the direction, resources, and tools to get that job done. The 88th Logistics Group is also about those who support us behind the scenes, and that is our families, and I will ensure that their needs are taken care of as well. Finally, I pledge we, as an organization, will give back to the Air Force and local community. Our goal will be to leave the Air Force, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and the gracious community of Dayton, Ohio, better than when we arrived. All I ask from you is that you support me in the same manner that you supported Colonel Tate. For I'm certain with that level of support, we will be the best organization not only in the Air Force, but in the world. And we will continue to provide Semper Fortidir, our mentors, strong support for the warfighter. I am proud to be a part of the 88th Logistics Team, and I look forward to serving all of you. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Colonel D'Angelo. It's my honor at this time to allow the guest of honor for Colonel D'Angelo to be presented bouquets of flowers by Captains Ginger Hayden and Cormac Alpine. Receiving flowers would be Colonel D'Angelo's mother, Mrs. Jean D'Angelo, Colonel D'Angelo's mentor, Miss Mary Wagner, and his aunt, Miss Helen Russo. Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women of the 88th Logistics Group and the 88th Air Base Wing, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, extend best wishes to Colonel Tate and his family for continued health, happiness, and success. And we at this time also wish to extend a warm Wright-Pat welcome to Colonel D'Angelo and his family. Please rise for the playing of the Air Force song to be followed by the departure of the official party.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's change of command ceremony. We thank all of you for attending, and please be available to form a receiving line at the rear of the hangar to greet Colonel D'Angelo and his family. Thank you.